Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. Thanks for tuning in to the Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host, and I'm going to bring you up to speed, inshallah, God willing, on some current news that caught my attention. Before we get into that and my reaction to it, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, so you can get all of our upcoming videos as soon as they come out and you don't miss out. All right, let's get into this chopper crash where seven were killed flying from the Bahamas to Fort Lauderdale just recently. And I'll give you my, my reaction, my thoughts on it, and, and I'll discuss why I actually, why I'm discussing this. This is the Dean, the Dean Investigators in the Bahamas are trying to find out what caused a deadly helicopter crash that killed all seven people on board. These images show the grim discovery at sea. Among the dead, 60-year-old billionaire coal tycoon Chris Klein, his daughter Cameron, and her close friend Brittany Searson. I think his legacy is that you work hard and you can achieve many, many things, but don't ever forget where you came from. The Royal Bahamas Police Force says a chopper like this one took off from Grand Cay, a tourist hotspot in the Abacus Islands, heading to Fort Lauderdale early Thursday morning. Klein's brother tells NBC News the group took off at 2 a.m. and route to a hospital in South Florida because one of the passengers was sick. Klein, who once dated Tiger Woods' ex-wife, Elin Nordegren, was well known as a philanthropist. He donated millions to charity, including to Marshall University. The school named their state-of-the-art athletic complex in his honor. Thank you guys very much and thanks for all your work. The governor of West Virginia called him a superstar and a wonderful, loving, and giving man. Today would have been Klein's 61st birthday. What exactly caused this crash remains a mystery. It remains a mystery. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this topic was because this is something that really helps soften my heart. The remembrance of death. It helped me to awaken my mind and myself to the reality that we're all going to face that reality of death. Many people, they don't want to talk about it. They diverge from the conversation, make a joke about it. But just when you watch this, you see that one, what catches your attention from this is that the person was a, was a billionaire. So you're sure, you, you think that the person did everything in their power to make sure that the gas was right, the helicopter was tuned up, that they had the best mechanic, and nobody's expecting that that plane, that helicopter is going to go down. And you had the age ranges from his daughter from 22 years old, himself was, I believe, 61, and the other five people that were in the plane for a total of seven. And I'm sure nobody in the helicopter was thinking, okay, this is our day. We're going to expire we're going to depart from this life and nobody knew that they would be submerged underwater for days until the rescue came and it's still a mystery on how that helicopter went down what kind of life do you think a billionaire is able to have what kind of luxuries what, what kind of possessions is a billionaire think about that able to have but what's it all worth at the end when even with all that money, millions or billions, you cannot still pay someone to carry your sickness. You can't exchange their health for your health. You can't have somebody extend your life. You can't have someone die for you. You can't have someone bring you back to life. So this news story, when I heard it, it really brought me back to the beginning of my awakening when I start to really think and ponder uh, about the purpose of life. Why are we here? Where do we come from? Where are we going when we die? Death was a catalyst that had me really take off. You know, the, the topic of death is something that we should really take serious. If you have a major event coming up and now you're not preparing for that major event, you would think that person is foolish. You got a fight coming up. Maybe it's in the UFC. And now your coaches and your friends are telling you, hey, prepare. It's coming up. The date is there. It's set. And now you're eating junk food. You're not training. It can be a basketball game, a football game, whatever sport, a major test. 
a major exam, and people are warning you. People are telling you, hey, you've got to take this serious. You got one shot to get this right. You can't go back and retake the exam. And this is the reality of death. That we cannot go back after it comes. You cannot go back and redo it. You got your shot right now to get it right. So this is something that for us, for me, when I see this, it just brings that reality home. And I think about an ayah from the Quran. And for the not yet Muslims out there, the Quran is the verbatim word of God Almighty. In Arabic we say Allah. And where Allah is saying, the Almighty, the Creator is saying, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ وُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُهْزِ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعْغُرُونَ It brings us back to the reality that God Almighty, Allah is saying that every soul will taste death. Every one of us will have to experience what they experienced. doesn't matter if you're a billionaire, a millionaire, if you're a poor man, poor woman off the street. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, from Malaysia, from Arabia, from Italy, from Romania, from the USA, if you're Trump, if you're Obama, Bush, doesn't matter. Every soul will taste death. And then the verse, the ayah continues saying, and then only on the day of recompense, on the day of judgment, will you be paid back your full, what you did in this life. That's when you're going to get paid. Then you're going to go ahead and for the good that you reaped, you sowed good, you'll get good back. You did evil, that's going to come back to you on the day of judgment doesn't make sense that at the end you're watching a, a movie and then you see the culprit, you see the, the, gang, the evil person is able to commit all sorts of atrocities and crimes, the tyrant, the oppressor, and then you're waiting at the end for justice to prevail. Does that make any sense that the most unjust tyrants of this world, the people who have killed who have raped, who have done all sorts of atrocities, that at the end, they would just fall asleep, turn to dust, and not be held accountable? Imagine watching a movie like that, and the person just got away. The plot, at the end, didn't bring justice to the story. The storyline was, was without catching this culprit, and there was no justice brought at the end. This wouldn't be a good film, would it? But more importantly... This would be something that wouldn't go down easy with you. And it, it doesn't make sense that all the things that our people are doing in this life and getting away with, that they would get away with it in the hereafter. Now you have, this is something that is ingrained in all of us, to believe in a day of judgment. It's just something natural to believe in. That yes, the person who might have done all sorts of evil in this life, at the end, they will be accountable in the next life. So this ayah, this verse is talking about that. That's when you're going to be paid back in full. For either all the good that you did or the evil that you did. The day of judgment. And then from there, paradise or the hellfire. So then the verse goes on. That only the one who is removed far from the hellfire and admitted to the paradise, to the jannah, that's the person who has achieved the objective, the purpose of this life. For the life of this world is the mere enjoyment of delusions. And this is very powerful, very powerful ayah bringing things home. That the objective of this life is to do everything that we can in this life. To have a good ending. To be awake, not asleep. So when death finally comes, we're prepared. But how many people are truly prepared? How many people are preparing for the DD, the departure date? And this is what softened my heart to really think and reflect. Any intelligent person, you can be a PhD, have a master's degree, a professor, a doctor, and one, some of the most, be one of the most intellectual persons. But if you don't get this right, how really intelligent are you? That you put all your investment into a, a stock that is declining day by day. That's your time in this earth. 
you invested everything here, but you forgot about there because we're here for a short amount of time. And now you've amassed all the wealth in this life, but now someone else takes control of that because you can't take it. And it's another beautiful statement. Now this time by the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. You see, God Almighty sent messengers throughout time. And they didn't come with different religions or ways of life. They came with the same message. Noah brought it. Abraham brought it. Moses brought it. Jesus, peace be upon him, brought it. And the last and final messenger in that line of messengers out of God's love. He didn't leave us without guidance. They all called people to turn their life, their heart, in obedience and in love to their creator. And to worship him alone. Not to set up intermediaries in that worship. And this worship means to love everything that the Creator loves, to obey Him, and to stay away from everything that He's told us to stay away from. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he had reiterated this point, this important point, that telling us that everything in this life of wealth, of material things, is going to be left behind. And he gave a beautiful, if you can imagine now, Next time you're at the funeral procession, think about this hadith. This is in Bukhari and Muslim where he said there's three things that follow a human being to the grave. One is their relatives. Two is their wealth. And three is the deeds that they live by, the deeds that they did in this life. How did you live your life? Did you live your life following your lusts and desires and you forgot about your creator, the one who created you, who fashioned you, who gave you life, who will give you death, the one who's blessed you with all these blessings in life? The innumerable, you can't even count them. The amount of blessings that he's had, but you've turned a blind eye. And every time a sign came to you, just like this one, you turned away. You didn't heed the call to salah, to prayer, to hajj, to fasting, the blueprint, blueprint for life. You thought you knew it all. So now what do you do next? Where do you go when the death comes with Melikul Mot? And now it's time for you to taste death. And you didn't implement this ayah and run far from the hellfire by obedience to your creator. But you ran towards the Jahannam by the disobedience to Allah. So now the three things that follow you of that wealth, you're at the funeral procession, procession and you can see the family comes, all the things you paid for, they're wearing it, the cars, the jewelry, and all the other fancy things, they're coming, they're coming, everything is coming to the funeral procession. And then all those things, you stay, they go away. So you stay or you go away, they stay. And then what follows you in the grave is your deeds, what you did in this life. And the number one deed is your faith, your iman. What did you believe in? Did you worship a human being as a god, a human being that ate, slept, defecated, was not self-sufficient? Or you truly worship the truly self-sufficient creator of the heavens and earth, the same God, Almighty Allah, that Jesus worshipped that Abraham worshipped, that Moses worshipped, the one that's all-loving, Al-Wadud, the all-forgiving, the most merciful, that he wants you to rise to your full potential, to give it your best. He knows you're going to fall short, but just do your best. Don't turn a blind eye and don't set up another God next to God. It's only one God. And then, did you go ahead and follow that belief up with the actions, the deeds now? And you got one shot to get it right. It's not YOLO. It's not you only live once. No, you live twice. You live in this life. And how you lived in this life will determine your next life. So in conclusion, this sign here for us that at any time, death can come. It can be, you can be a billionaire with all your money. And you could take all, like I'm sure this billionaire did. He took all the precautions, most likely He's got his family in there. He wants to make sure that he gets from Bahamas to Fort Lauderdale. So he's got a checklist. But you just never know. At the end, when your time comes to go, it's time to go. But are you prepared for the fight? Because your biggest fight, you could be the toughest USC fighter. You can prepare for all of the other things of this life. For all of the exams of this life. But if you're not living and passing the ultimate test of this life, because every day we're being tested, whether you like it or not. And you're either, we're either failing the test or passing the test. And that test, the one who grades it, 
on the day of judgment is the one who created you, the Almighty. Not the Almighty dollar that many people worship. No. It's the one who created you, who fastened you, who blessed you, who you're going to have to return back to. So you want to return back with a purified heart, knowing that you strove your best to submit and surrender your will to the will of the Creator. And that's summed up with one word, Islam. You did Islam to the best of your ability. And you were a Muslim. Because a Muslim is one who submits his or her will to the Creator of the heavens and earth. And that's that same way of life. It's not a new religion, a new way of life. It's been there the, since the first man, Adam. And that legacy has continued on. That way has continued on through all these prophets and messengers. They all called humanity to submit their will to the will of the one God. And there's no deity worthy of worship except the Almighty, the one who created you and fashioned you. So remember this. Heed the advice. Think about it. Ponder over it. And ask deep down inside. If this is your first time hearing a message like this, ask your Creator to make it clear, to guide you. And for those who are living this purpose, living the deen, don't forget. Don't forget that we will all face that departure date soon and let it soften your heart and for those who have abandoned salat those who have become more keen to pleasing the people instead of pleasing Allah let this be a reminder to us all to remember who comes first in our life and that's the one who created us the one who loves us more than our than our mothers than anyone can love us is our creator but do you love your creator? do you love him? if you love him you're going to obey Him. And the only way you're truly going to love your Creator is by knowing Him. And you have the Quran and the Sunnah. Everything there explains what we have to do for success, who our Creator is, what He wants from us. And then from there, the love grows. And by implementing the deen, your Iman starts to grow. Inshallah, we can go ahead and take from this as a great reminder. Continue to tune in here to the Deen Show. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get all of the latest upcoming videos and shows sent to you and you don't miss out. We'll see you next time. You can also support us on the Patreon. We have a page there. Leave us your takeaways in the comments below. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.